Well, I thought I should probably do an update here. Um, and I appreciate all the suggestions and all the uh, help that people offered in solving the problem here. And we did get it solved. Um, what it turned out was that uh, there was a whole bunch of different things that needed to be done. But the, uh, the basic issue was that there is a synthetic washer here under the graduated dial and it had compressed over the years I think to where if you tightened up the uh, put some tension on the screw um, it ended up binding the dial to this uh, housing here and uh, this piece on the end got pulled in and it was binding on the housing and so you either had it so tight that uh, the ratchet mechanism wouldn't work or so loose that the screw um, wasn't giving enough resistance to the ratchet. Well, I thought I should probably do an update here. Um, and I appreciate all the suggestions and all the uh, help that people offered and solving the problem here and we did get it solved. Um, what it turned out was that uh, there was a whole bunch of different things that needed to be done but the, uh, the basic issue was that there is a synthetic washer here under the graduated dial and it had compressed over the years I think to where if you tightened up the uh, put some tension on the screw um, it ended up binding the dial to this uh, housing here and uh, this piece on the end got pulled in and it was binding on the housing and so you either had it so tight that uh, the ratchet mechanism wouldn't work or so loose that the screw um, wasn't giving enough resistance to the ratchet. But in any event, we got it working. And, um, oops. But in, in any event, we got it working. I think you can hear the ratchet there, and it's it's operating properly. Ratchet, and then turns the screw. So that's good. It works both directions. So what we had to do was uh, when we put it all back together, we took out that synthetic washer, and then we had to take about fifteen thousandths off the dial. Um, and we cleaned everything up, polished everything, uh, took all the burrs we could find out of there and uh, just generally made things smoother. Uh, and then we put a wavy washer, I guess that's what you call it. Put uh, a wavy washer, I got, I didn't want to get a Belleville because I had to buy a hundred of them but these I could buy five so we tried this first and we put it on this end and everything seems to work fine um, there were some issues along the way the um, this part of the housing actually was cracked let me see if I can find it here you can see it was it was cracked and actually fell off and I tried to epoxy it back but it just didn't quite work so I ended up cutting this off and making a new um, I don't know what you call that but a you know, thing to hold the uh, ratchet in place and uh, that was an event in and of itself but um, we did get it done everything works 
And in particular, I want to thank uh, one of my machining buds, Jim, from over in Vacaville, who came over and spent the day uh, going through this whole cross-feed mechanism with me. And, uh, and we got it to work, and uh, it was actually a lot of fun having somebody here in the shop and uh, trying to track down each little uh, issue. And we had lots of them, uh, polishing and cleaning up and, and a little bit of machine work. So anyway, that's the, uh, the net result is the thing works. And now I can finish putting it back together. We're going to um, mount our, our vise. There's the vise right there, and then we can start uh, machining some stuff with it.